Welcome back to Fascinating History. Today we take an exciting journey through Indiana Jones and the real-life connections that were insanely accurate throughout history. Did you know Indiana Jones' thrilling escapades aren't just a flight of fancy? They're peppered with surprising historical accuracy. Take the Crystal Skulls from Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, for instance. These aren't just cinematic creations, they have a mysterious past, possibly linked to ancient civilizations like the Aztecs. And what about the Nazis' obsession with archaeology and the occult? Well, it turns out this was more than just a plot device. It was a disturbing reality, with their twisted ideologies driving them to search for artifacts like the Holy Grail and the Ark of the Covenant. So how much of Indiana Jones' world is rooted in fact, and where does fiction take over? Well, let's get started. Crystal Skulls in Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, we dive into the 1950s, where Indiana Jones embarks on an adventure to outwit Soviet agents in a quest for an ancient crystal skull. Unlike his previous quest for the Ark of the Covenant and the Holy Grail, it's all about a crystal skull this time. It sounds a bit out there, right? But here's the twist. Crystal skulls aren't just a figment of Hollywood's imagination, they're rooted in real history. These enigmatic artifacts have been stirring up debates among scientists and historians. National Geographic sheds light on this, revealing that some crystal skulls are considered ancient, possibly tracing back to the Aztec Empire or an even older civilization. Could it be Atlantis? That's a question that keeps historians up at night. But not everyone's convinced about their ancient origins. A camp believes these skulls were crafted in the 19th century primarily to attract tourists. And the film? It nails the depiction of the crystal skull, so much so that the prop used in the movie sparked a lawsuit. It was an exact replica of a skull stolen from Belize, according to Gizmodo. Talk about attention to detail! Nazis and their archaeology The Indiana Jones series often shows Nazis in hot pursuit of archaeological treasures. It seems like a perfect plot device for a thrilling adventure, but was this true? Did the Nazis obsess over archaeology? The answer is a resounding yes. The Nazis were fixated on the idea that certain geographical locations were inherently tied to ethnic groups and their cultures. They used archaeology to support their narrative of a pure Nordic race, which they claimed had historical roots across the vast expanse of Europe. This twisted theory even fueled Hitler's territorial ambitions. Heinrich Himmler, a high-ranking Nazi official with a penchant for the occult and zero scientific background, has spearheaded many of these archaeological missions. His goal? To prove the existence of an ancient German civilization predating others, to justify the supposed superiority of the German race. As How Stuff Works highlights, Hitler's regime even dispatched archaeologists to conquered lands to prove historical Germanic presence, legitimizing his expansionist agenda. So the films got it right. The Nazis' fascination with archaeology wasn't just for show. It was a core part of their ideology and a tool for their sinister objectives, just as Indiana Jones reveals. The thuggies in Indiana Jones were real. In Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, Indy encounters the Thuggy Cult, a group with a penchant for heart-ripping and supernatural antics. It sounds like pure Hollywood magic, but here's the twist. The Thuggies were real. Author Mike Dash and NPR shed light on this. The Thuggies were a notorious group in 19th century India, and yes, our word thug comes from them. Unlike their cinematic portrayal, they were more a band of robbers and murderers than a religious cult. They used charm and deceit to blend in with travelers under British rule, only to turn on them at night with deadly force. The Thuggies inspired many exaggerated tales, morphing into super-powered cultists in popular lore. When the British tasked William Sleeman with eradicating them, he used early forms of modern policing, not mystical means. By the time of Indiana Jones' fictional adventures, the Thuggies had long been eliminated, with many scholars suggesting that the British exaggerated their portrayal as a control mechanism. So while Temple of Doom takes creative liberties, what about the actual existence of the Thuggies and their notoriety? Well, that part is grounded in historical truth. The Tannis excavation was essentially accurate. Let's talk about Raiders of the Lost Ark and its depiction of the Tannis excavation. Indiana Jones races against the Nazis to uncover the Ark of the Covenant in the ancient Egyptian city of Tannis. 
The film shows a massive dig site, buzzing with local laborers and Nazi machinery. Sounds like a typical Hollywood exaggeration, right? Well, not exactly. Tannis is indeed a real place. The film suggests it vanished due to a biblical sandstorm, but it was more about geographical changes. National Geographic explains that Tannis was abandoned after the Nile River shifted, turning the area into a desert. So the city didn't vanish overnight, it was a gradual decline. Now about that excavation in the movie. It turns out the filmmakers did their homework. The Chicago Tribune points out that the scale and method of the excavation shown are spot on. Archaeologist William Parkinson confirms this, comparing the film's depiction to real excavations in Iraq by Henry Field. So while the film takes creative liberties with Tannis' history, it nails the archaeological process. There was a real Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones, the charming, whip-cracking archaeologist, has become an icon. Thanks to Harrison Ford's portrayal, there's been a surge in interest in archaeology. But let's face it, the life of a real archaeologist isn't quite as thrilling as dodging booby traps or outsmarting armies. Most of the time, archaeologists are busy with research, cataloging and piecing together history, far from the dramatic adventures of Indy. However, the character isn't entirely a work of fiction. Meet Roy Chapman Andrews, a real-life adventurer who could give Indy a run for his money. Born in 1884, Chapman Andrews' life reads like an adventure novel. According to Adventure Journal, he moved to New York after high school and joined the American Museum of Natural History. His fieldwork was nothing short of extraordinary. He survived near drownings, whale attacks, wild dogs, angry priests, cliff falls, venomous snakes, and even bandits. While he never battled Nazis over mystical artifacts, his life was filled with the kind of danger and excitement that Indiana Jones fans love. So while Indiana Jones might be a larger-than-life character, he's not entirely a leap of the imagination. In archaeology, there have been some real heroes whose lives were just as adventurous. The Red Scare was pretty scary. Indiana Jones in the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull takes a leap from religious artifacts to, well, aliens and crystal skulls. It's a wild ride with Soviet agents and a motorcycle riding Shia LaBeouf. But amidst the fantastical elements, the film touches on a very real and dark chapter of American history, the Red Scare. The film is set in 1957, when mere suspicion of communist ties could ruin careers. Film critic Alex Flood highlights a poignant moment in the movie where Indiana Jones loses his job due to suspected communist associations despite being a victim of kidnapping and attempted murder by those very agents. This wasn't just a plot device, it was a reflection of the era's paranoia. The influence of Senator Joseph McCarthy might have been waning, but the fear and consequences of being labeled a communist sympathizer were very much alive. Western archaeologists really did steal artifacts like Indy. When we think of Indiana Jones, we picture thrilling adventures and daring escapades to secure ancient treasures. But there's a more controversial side to these stories that's become increasingly apparent over time. Indiana Jones' famous line, that belongs in a museum, encapsulates the franchise's stance on artifact acquisition. But as the Washington Post points out, this attitude is problematic. It reflects a time when Western archaeologists often took priceless artifacts from less developed countries under the guise of preservation and education. Vice reports that many museums in cities like London and New York are filled with treasures from Egypt, Greece, South America, and beyond, acquired under questionable circumstances. The reality is that there were many real-life Indiana Joneses who, without the bullwhip and revolver, appropriated cultural treasures for Western collections. Today, this aspect of archaeology is viewed through a critical lens. Indiana Jones, once seen as a heroic figure, might now be considered a looter in modern eyes. As countries like Greece demand the return of their artifacts, the portrayal of archaeology in future films may need to adapt to these changing perspectives. The adventurous archaeologist, once celebrated, now faces a reckoning with the ethical implications of his actions. The Raider's flying wing was based on real planes. Remember that heart-pounding Raiders of the Lost Ark scene with Indiana Jones fighting a massive German soldier near a BV-38 flying wing? 
The plane's menacing propellers add a sense of imminent danger to the already intense brawl. While the BV-38 was a creation for the film, it wasn't just pulled out of thin air. Its design has roots in real experimental aircraft from World War II. The BV-38 in the film draws inspiration from actual planes, like the Horton HO-229. Developed in 1943, this German aircraft was a marvel of engineering for its time, boasting a design that promised exceptional speed and agility. The Nazis saw its potential and invested heavily in it, but technical issues kept it from ever being mass-produced. The concept of a flying wing wasn't exclusive to the Germans. The United States also experimented with similar designs, like the Vought V-173, known as the Flying Pancake. Given these historical experiments, the idea of the Nazis having a functional version of such an aircraft isn't too far-fetched. So while the BV-38 might not have existed in reality, it represents a fascinating what-if scenario based on real aeronautical advancements of the era. So which real-life historical fact from the Indiana Jones series surprised you the most, and why? Let us know down below, and as always, see you in the next video.